Welcome to the webinar. This is our Deeper Dive series. Uh, I am Tom Kirkham, CEO of Kirkham, which has two different divisions, Iron Tech Security, which is our InfoSec or our cybersecurity division, where we specialize in cybersecurity uh, for critical infrastructure, law and courthouses and accountants. And so we're dedicated to those three markets. Uh, Kirkham, of course, Kirkham IT is our, uh, is our MSP side where we're basically an outsourced IT company, but uh, these are all really about iron tech. So welcome aboard. So you wanna take notes on this because the way to dramatically improve your organization's security posture and especially your defense is really composed of three things. This is our, this is what we consider our core. If you get these three things, whether you get them from us or someone else, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you need these three things. Everyone should have these three things in their organization. Number one is continuous cybersecurity awareness training for everybody, everyone in the organization. And it's updated constantly. So, you know, whether it's a new one, a new test or video every week or every month, it doesn't matter. We just want to make sure that the latest, greatest scams and threats and things like that, they're educated on on how to detect them. Number two is you need an EDR or a, there's, you're starting to see it called an endpoint protection platform these days. Uh, the, what people make a common mistake uh, of, and we go into this in the main webinar, but they make a common mistake. And I even hear IT people say this is that, well, I, antivirus is as good as it gets and don't click on any attach, email attachments from people you don't know. Well, first of all, antivirus is about one, just barely one notch above useless. In fact, if you take into consideration that it gives you a false sense of security, I would actually say it's totally useless and you don't need it. You need a very specialized product that is called EDR. Now, often people hear me say those three things, they get off the webinar and they go, oh, well, we've already got McAfee and I think I got a promo email that they've got a special on their EDR product. If you can buy a true, uh, you can only buy a true EDR from a security company. It is not available off the shelf. Their EDR product is simply inferior. It is, it's, it's better than antivirus, but believe me, there are much, much better. And if you've attended our main webinar, you know we're a best of breed company, which means we're not gonna put substandard EDRs on our clients. So if you can buy it off the shelf, it's not suitable. And then finally, you have to have a good backup and business continuity plan, which means you've got to be able to recover from a ransomware attack or any other type of attack from uh, a backup. And you have to plan that and you've got to understand that there's cost involved with implementing it. How many touch points do you have? In other words, how many places do you need to put protection in there? And uh, those, and then how quickly do you need to restore or how quickly do you need to be back up and running? Now, generally that's a function around perhaps the user uh, and certain things that can control the whole organization. So downtime costs a lot of money, you know, uh, especially with our law firm clients, you know, if you're billing out 300, 500, $1,200 an hour, and you've got 30 attorneys that are down, it doesn't take long to figure out that oh, I should have put this in place a long time ago because just one outage, we're getting into tens of thousands of dollars in lost productivity. So you do these three things and you do it carefully, you're going to dramatically not only improve your defensive posture, but you're also going to be able to uh, dramatically improve your business resilience. Sometimes it's referred to as business continuity and other times it's referred to as disaster recovery. Now, those three things have some minor technical differences between them, but for the sake of our conversation and most conversations around backup and continuity, uh, you can really interchange those three 
terms. The bonus is, is that tornadoes, floods, uh, nuclear warfare can all be entered into the planning for business continuity, okay? So it's, it's a function of time and money, you know, it really is, but you're going to be surprised at how inexpensive um, you can uh, get these things. And uh, they're really, really good enterprise grade backups with virtual machines and things like that. So I'm going to stop my share here for a moment and bring up my um, cybersecurity training screen. And if there's any questions uh, so far, just go ahead and pop it in there because uh, this is going to take just a minute to get it up. You might want to put the link to uh, the um, security uh, assessment. Okay. Deal. Sorry, everybody. I found out I just might be might have been exposed to COVID. If you're wondering why this is going uh, a little rockier than usual, <laughs> even rockier than usual. Okay. Yeah, there it is. You're going to want to save that link, or go ahead and click on it right now while you're waiting, and then uh, you'll see what it's for in just a moment. So what I'm going to show you is our portal, our security portal that keeps track of how everybody in the company is doing on cybersecurity awareness training. Because um, you've got to do this. You've got to keep track of what everybody's doing. And uh, is my screen out now? Uh, yeah, but it looks a little blurry or something. Let me do that again. Okay. The, the, the thing about security awareness training is you, you've got you've to lead and you've got to manage it, right? You just can't say, here's the link, go take the quizzes and show me your certificate when you're done. You, you want to uh, manage it and really keep tabs on it and coach throughout this whole thing. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So uh, what you're looking at here, and, and we, we try out different security things all the time, so don't get too alarmed at our own score here. But you can see here for all of these different employees, you can see what each one of them's score is. And here, Kenzie, me, we're medium risk. We're a medium risk to the company. Now, the overall impact to the company is we're still in the green, but I can tell you for a fact that Kenzie, Tom, and Megan here, they all need coaching and they need to get their scores up. Um, we also check email addresses. So in this case, uh, say tom.kirkham at irontechsecurity.com. We check that email address on the dark web to see if, it's, if that email address has been involved with a breach like LinkedIn and things like that. And then we usually get a lot more detailed information about that breach. What that tells you is they need to change their credentials, first of all, for that site. And if they've reused their credentials, they need to change all the other sites that they've used those credentials on too. Because if they get one set of credentials, they, they start testing them against other sites. Okay, the micro quizzes, okay. Uh, the company as a whole scoring 97%, which is not bad. And then the phishing fail rate. So this particular security system sends out a phishing simulated email out once a week. And we keep track of who clicks through it, who fall, who fails the test. So this is showing a 6% failure rate, which is not good. Uh, but sometimes these phishing emails are really good. Now, what these are, that phishing email is so important because that is the threat vector for by far for most ransomware attacks. And if you take that and consider the statistic that over 90% of breaches to an organization occur because an employee was conned into doing something, 
almost without exception through an email these days. Now, compromised websites, yes, but email is really the big threat. So that phishing rate needs to be real, real low. That's, that's the thing. That's, that's a little higher than what it should be, obviously. So you get these things and um, you can, I can switch over to an employee view here. Now the employees only get to see this, this view. So this is my personal stuff. Uh, everybody's name is obfuscated. I don't know why Kenzie's is not, but at any rate, you can see that I've had a 10% failure rate. Uh, I'm only doing 90% on the, or 96% on the micro quiz, but I don't have any external data breaches, but I'm still a fair employee secure score. So, and then I'm going to run a micro quiz and I'll give you a little taste of what it looks like. Passwords are our keys to the digital world. Ugh, not that line again. But seriously, passwords are immensely important for both our work lives and personal lives. A recent report estimates an average person has between 70 and 80 passwords they need to remember and manage. This becomes a serious problem when we realize we all should be creating unique and strong passwords for each of our accounts. The good news is, Technology has taken a step forward and has provided us with tools to make the task of creating and managing these passwords more simplified. The best so way to I'm ensure that you have strong thing, and unique it's only passwords a across video, all your accounts a to is to use minutes. a password After manager. The video a password plays, manager will... Uh, they answer these questions. So two-factor authentication is a major... Well, that's, that's uh, false. Password manager, you need to get a password manager. That's the way to keep track of all that. And uh, let's see, gosh, I, I need to blaze through these. I may miss one because I'm not reading the details. They actually, they phrase these questions specifically, some of them to mislead you and to make you carefully read it. So if I don't get 100%, that's because I'm just guessing at the last one, I didn't even read that question. So well, I lucked out anyway. And, and so that's where that's, you can see here that I, there's a whole bunch of videos that I haven't watched. So, and the, and a lot of these are on things that like gas pump skimmers or credit card skimmers, where they educate you just in your personal life. And if anybody's uh, ever been a victim of a gas pump skimmer, you all of a sudden know what to look for. And basically the bottom line is if anything looks weird on a gas pump, especially where you put your credit card in. Don't. Uh, the way I discovered the two different ones that I was worried about, and one of them was absolutely a skimmer, is I stuck my card in and it didn't feel smooth. Now I know that the manufacturing tolerances has to be a little bit better than that. So I knew right then and there that that one, oh, and, uh, and you punch your zip code in and it failed, the credit card wouldn't be authorized. So it made you do it over and over again. And that's another sure sign that uh, it's a gas pump skimmer. And that, in fact, the one time that I discovered it, I was out of town and uh, the gas pump, and I think the guy in the convenience store was in on it because, oh yeah, sometimes out of town cards get declined like that. It doesn't work right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So your buddy and you put this on there. Okay. I got you. Anyway, these, these are really good. It, it helps people in their personal lives. And the more you make your it, the more you make your people secure, the lower their stress level is of, and their lower their attack surface is and the lower the possibility they have an identity theft problem, which increases the value to the company. Okay. So not only are you doing it for the organization, but you're also doing it to help everybody there. And, it, and we see Everyone that signs up for these, probably at least 20 or 30% get forwarded to friends and family. They, they can't take the test and they don't get scored, but they can at least watch the video. So we know it's used internally. So that's a little demo of that. Did I cover everything on that, Kenzie? Say it one more time. Did I cover everything on that? Yeah. 
All right, let's get back to the slideshow. Let's see if this will work as smooth as I think it will. Look at that. Almost. Almost. Almost as smooth. We all right now? Yep. Okay. Now, before I start this video, this is a demo of one of our primary EDR. We have more than one in our technology or our security stack. This one is the best in the world. I, I just can't say enough good things about it. Uh, if you're a technology investor, you want to write this company name down because they're probably going to be going public here in a few months. And uh, they've got patents on their artificial intelligence and machine learning they've built into the software and they're not easily copyable. There's a lot of EDR vendors out there, but this is the best of the best of breed. This is like best of show, okay? When it comes to dogs, best of show, not just best of breed. Sentinel One is awesome. Now, having said that, what you're about to see here is what we see and what our center. So when an event anomaly occurs or something that a human being needs to look at, we get alerts and then we lay eyes on it. We put humans behind it and we're looking at this attack, identifying where it's coming from, trying to figure out uh, how it got in there. You know, what, 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 what was how did it penetrate? All of these different, what do we need to do to kill it, quarantine it, whatever. And this, what they're doing in the demo is they are going to simulate a ransomware attack by turning off one of the deals that just, that in the control panel say, we don't want to kill it. We just want to uh, detect it. And they're going to let it run and infect the computer. Okay. And then, because of the uniqueness of this product, all the files are going to be encrypted. The ransomware notice is going to be dis displayed pretty quickly. And in a real production environment, that may take hours or even days before all of the files that it can touch are encrypted. But then this product has the unique ability to do a one-click rollback. And that's what they're simulating here in this next video. So uh, I'll try to give you an overview as it goes, but that's, that's what's going on. Oops. That's what's going on in that video. Let me get back to it. Sorry. Okay. Once again, this is the SOC or the security operation center control panel. So they're changing the normal settings to just detect. That's not the way it runs in real life. You don't do that. We're going to actually let it attack this computer. Okay, here's the victim computer. Maybe the reception. It could be the CEO. It could be the managing partner. It could be the utility manager. So we're going to open this email attachment. Okay, there it goes. Now, on the left side, you'll see all those file names changed. That, was, that means they're encrypted. And then that gets popped up automatically. That tells you how much it's going to tell you how much Bitcoin you've got to pay and what your time frame is. And what's the average now over $200,000 is the average bit, uh, ransom now. Uh, now, we're looking at the, these products, especially this one has what is called a storyline in our business. How did the threat execute step by step? What is its storyline? What's the plot? What's the arc? of the attack. So if we better understand tactically from a defensive standpoint, we can respond offensively. And that's what we do when we have an anomaly or a security event, we respond. It's not like an antivirus that if it doesn't kill it, we're over with, right? It's got automated stuff built in, but we still lay eyeballs on it and nothing's a hundred percent. So we can look here and see all the different things that it fired off. Uh, I think they show the encryption service. Remember, these ransomwares do not have viruses. 
Antivirus cannot detect any ransomware. There's no virus to detect. So it has to be machine learned or artificial intelligence it has to be applied to good, good defensive tools like this. <clears throat> so here goes the rollback. He's going to apply it and the file names will return right back to the way they were. And I think the file for that, yep, that goes away too. And there he, they opened up one of the files to prove that it was back. It's not encrypted anymore. So we killed it, mitigated it fine. Everything's over with. And it's, you know, we rarely ever have to use that. But when we do, it's always worked. So it's really neat. Now, no good security company will tell you that the defense is 100%. In fact, there's many, many other layers that we consider when we're talking with uh, uh, prospects about what is their security posture? What are you trying to protect? How many, you know, it just, there's scads and scads of things that come in. Most people already have a firewall of some sort. Is it good enough? You know, we got to go through all these different things. But just these three things is what you need. Now, since it's never 99%, You've got a plan for a failure or a ransomware attack or catastrophic facility loss. That's where a good critical part of a backup is a virtual machine backup. So I'm just going to let you watch this. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but write down any uh, questions you may have. So basically what happened there is we use that particular backup solution. And most of our clients use a multiple backup methodologies, technical controls, administrative controls, and all of that. If you've been through the main webinar, you, you know what I'm talking about. But what that was, was so cool. And the way we do it in our office is we have basically one accounting machine and uh, at one time, everything was stored. All the data files were stored on it for security reasons. And that was mission critical machine for us. We got to get invoices out. We got to pay bills, blah, blah, blah. So we just do a backup of the entire machine taking periodic snapshots. An hour ago, uh, I think that one's set up to do it continuously. But regardless, we back it up to both a local device and to the cloud. Now, if we had ever had a catastrophic loss of maybe just that machine, maybe it just caught on fire and the hard drive got melted or something, or the whole building got wiped out, right? We have choices to bring up that machine just as if nothing happened, okay? So that's where the virtual machine comes in. So our first choice, can we bring it up locally on this other device that we're backing up to? And if the answer is yes, we're back up and running practically instantly. Now, maybe the whole building burned down, tornado come through, blew the office away. Okay, let's go to the cloud. Let's go to my house and we'll go to the cloud and then we'll pull up the accounting machine. So we've got an entire backup of that machine ready to go live. And we automate the testing of that, that machine. So... What it does each and every day is it boots up the virtual machine. It's an exact copy of the physical machine that's in the office, okay? 
but automatically it boots it up to the login screen. And that's what you see there on the left. I know it's not shaped like a computer monitor, but that you'll see the whole screen. That is the login screen at that date and time, uh, the time I took this, um, made the slide. So if we boot up that virtual machine and it's gotten to the logon screen, it is very safe to assume that it's ready to go at any time. Now that's done automatically. Now we have other technical controls with revolving backup, including Datto, or this virtual machine backup, which is by Datto, uh, but even data only backups. We've got tools that monitor those for failures. And then finally, we lay eyeballs on those backups. We don't set and forget and pray that they're there in case we need them. We check them continuously all day long, both automatic and manually for any possible errors. And then we remediate and mitigate them as soon as we discover any. So if you, if, if your IT guy, especially if you out, this is IT companies are notorious for this. If you, especially if you're using an outsource break fix where you're paying by the hour, if you're paying your IT company by the hour and they're not billing you for checking their backup, your backups, and there's no one responsible or no one else in your office doing it. And, and, and don't forget, it does take some skill to check backups. Uh, it's not a lot, but it does take some. Um, so they got to be trained if it's somebody on staff. But if they're not charging you for checking to make sure the backups are, are, uh, are there, are going to be there when you need them, then... You're, it's about like using antivirus. It's about one step above useless. You're running on a wing and a prayer, and that's not the way to, to do uh, to get your security posture in place. All right, so how does this all tie together to the NIST cybersecurity framework? Everyone that's um, been on, huh? Do you want to reshare your screen out? It's just a little blurry. It's like it almost okay. didn't take it. It looks good to me. That is a lot better. Awesome. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So anyone that's been in our uh, <clears throat> main webinar, you know, we're NIST CSF shop. That's NIST cybersecurity framework. It's part of uh, National Institutes of Standards. And uh, that's part of U.S. Department of Commerce. It's used worldwide. <clears throat> All sorts of companies use it. It's, it's, uh, it's just a really good cybersecurity framework to both identify everything and go about protecting your, your organization. So with just these three things, continuous cybersecurity training right there on the top, an EDR or an EPP, one in the middle column, and then backup and resilience, we're covering all five key components at least twice. You know, we use an onion layer defense, not the French Maginot line. We've got multiple layers of defensive strategy. So, you know, we do a lot with layers and we want at least two layers on every one. And just those three things hit two layers of each of the five NIST uh, main categories. So remember the EDR, we can recover with one click rollback and we can recover with backup. Respond, good training. Good training will detect threats and alert managers. Uh, of course, the EDR is going to automatically respond and alert human beings to look at it. And uh, backups are going to respond um, uh, just, just through the nature of doing the backup. But anyway, detection and protecting and identifying. those It covers at least two layers on every one of those. So uh, to give you an idea, because the title of this is affordable. I did a sample pricing. Uh, this is a very, very small network. The larger the network, the per user price usually goes down. Now we have to do a security assessment though, because everyone's, it's a function of time and money. 
uh, what the nature of the assets that we're trying to protect. If you don't have industrial control systems, then we don't probably don't have to look at putting log analyzers on there, you know, to look for anomalies in the, the logs of firmware, right? And we can look for anomalies in a printer. If somebody tries to attack a printer, we can pull those logs and look. But chances are no one's going to try to attack. That's not going to be the, the vector, right? It's going to be through an email. Uh, but at any rate, those three things, those, uh, the security training, the EDR, and the backup, if you've got just three PCs and no centralized uh, server, a separate server that does authentication and things like that, it would only cost you $99 a month. And that's just a sample uh, some people it's cheaper, other people it's more for three. It just depends on what you have to protect and how long you can be down and uh, various other things. And we work with you on that. So the security assessment, we send you a form. It's very basic. It's only got a few questions on it. We'll spend 20 or 30 minutes talking to you about some things and asking you questions and probing. If you've got an IT staff or an outsource IT company, have them join in on this. We're, we have an IT partner program if you outsource your IT. We work with IT staff and IT companies should not be a threat, okay? That sh we should not be a threat if you outsource your IT. We're experts at this, and uh, we see this stuff every day. So we work with them to build out the best solution for your company. And then we let you decide because as an owner, managing partner, utility manager, whatever that, whatever your title is, whatever your head honcho title is, you know, that's where the buck stops. You're the one that has to know how much money do I need to spend or how much money am I willing to spend so I don't my name and my company doesn't end up on the five o'clock news? Or my customer data is not stolen and used against me. Or all of the company data is encrypted and we're shut down. You have to know that and you've got to make those decisions. What we do is work with you to say, here's all your possibilities. And here's our recommendation for the level of risk that we've seen in organizations such as yours. There's the phone number. Add that to the three things. It's free. You don't have to do anything. We can also hook you up with three days of uh, security training, which gives you that full manager portal, and we help you uh, walk you through it. You know, for those thirty days, we're gonna say, "Hey, you need, your people are doing really bad here. We're gonna we're gonna nag you a little bit because the worst thing you can do is just send it out and say, "Everybody do this," and then that's it. It won't work that way. It's, you've got to establish a security first environment and it has to come from the top down top down and and it takes a while it takes a little effort not a whole lot you know you onboard employees if you've got good security we went through it today went through it last week we're onboarding onboarding employees and it's a hassle to get them set up at first but once you do everything gets so much better and so much more secure and so much smoother it actually increases productivity if you've got a really good secure environment, but, you, but everybody's got to buy into it. So at any rate, I'm a little over. If there's any questions though, we can stay as long as you'd like. I'll open it up. Mary's usually got one. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look like we have any yet. Okay. All righty. Well, that's it. Thank you for attending and we'll see you next Tuesday, I guess. Thank you guys.